ladies and gentlemen, it is now coming out that the police laid Marcellus Stanette on the ground and he was left to bleed for eight minutes, unattended, no medical help, no nothing. See, we've seen this multiple times. If you remember when Mike Brown was on the ground, they didn't touch him for four hours. They were making sure he would not survive. And they did the same thing in the case of Marcellus Dennis. They let him lay on that ground long enough to bleed out and not survive. See, they don't want you to live and tell your side of the story. That's what it's all about. And I want you to see this is consistently done to black shooting victims. They only leaving you unattended without medical help because they don't want you to live. And that's what they did to him. So this is USA Today, October 30th, 2020. Black teen Marcellus Danette bled out on ground for eight minutes after police shooting, lawsuit alleges. A Chicago black man did not receive medical assistance and bled out on the ground for eight minutes after he was shot by a Waukegan police officer. A federal lawsuit filed Thursday alleges Marcellus Stinnett, 19, was killed and his girlfriend, Tafara Williams, 20, was wounded October 20th when Williams allegedly reversed the car. They were um, in going towards an officer who fired into the car. This is the story according to the police. She tells a whole different story. And we know cops do that all the time. That's the great American way. The incident is one way. The video is another way. And the police report is a whole different story from everybody else's account, including what's on the videotape. <laughs> That's the great American way. Okay, the former Waukegan uh, police officer who was identified by police only as a Hispanic five-year member of the department, turned on his body camera after the shooting. Well, how come it was not on prior to the shooting? What the hell is up with that? Okay. According to videos released by the Northern Illinois City Wednesday afternoon, the officer was terminated last week for multiple policy and procedure violations. The department commander, Edgar Navarro, said, Stinnett's mother, um, she filed a lawsuit in the U.S. District Court on Thursday against the city of Waukegan. Two officers involved in the incident and the Waukegan police chief the suit alleges that one officer used explosives to force against uh, Stanette, and despite being in no immediate danger, discharged his firearm into the vehicle. Yeah, you know, because these two were unarmed. After the officer shot Williams and Stanette, Stanette was pulled from the vehicle and laid on the ground waited on the scene as an ambulance and did not receive medical assistance for over eight minutes while he bled out on the ground, according to the suit. Yeah, because they did that on purpose. They didn't want him to live. So they didn't give him first aid at all. But we heard this in the case of Botham John, right? With Amber Geiger. This is just a standard thing when they're dealing with Black victims. Okay. So attorneys for Williams, who remained hospitalized, also filed a lawsuit Wednesday on the behalf of her and her seven-month-old child. Stanette is the father of the child. The suit alleges use of force by, yeah, because it was very excessive, very excessive, um, by the officer, false arrest by two officers, 
unconstitutional practice by the city of Waukegan and its operations of the Waukegan Police Department and battery allegations against the officers in the city. Yeah, you know, like I said to y'all before, when they're dealing with us, it's anything goes. They don't care what the rules are. They don't care what the policies and procedures are. It's anything goes. Family members and attorneys, uh, Benjamin Crump and Antonio Romanucci, reviewed videos of the incident in Illinois State Police Office in Des Moines, uh, Des Plaines on Wednesday, and the city later released two building surveillance videos, two body cam videos, and two dash cam videos. The videos did not capture the shooting but show the car reversing into a building. No, he's not. No, those officers don't want you to see. They illegally shot these two. Yeah, that's why you don't see nothing on a body cam or anything. Remember, the Hispanic officer switched on his body camera after the incident was over. And as far as I'm concerned, every cop that was there that stood around and let Marcellus Stennis Stanette, bleed out on that ground, all of them should have been terminated, not just the one cop. And they all need to be charged and convicted. You know, you know, when somebody is killed, you should never be satisfied with a cop being fired. That's not good enough. The body-worn camera of the officer involved was not activated to properly uh, archive the time of the shooting. This was a breach of Waukegan Police Department policies and one of the reasons for the officer's termination, Mayor Sam Cunningham said in a statement Wednesday. Once the officer turns on the body cam, he appears to be standing several yards from the crash car. About 30 seconds in, he says, I was right behind you and you almost tried to run me over. Another officer can be seen running towards the car and its passengers yelling, are you okay? What happened? Who shot you? As Williams can be heard screaming for help. Lawyers for the family suggest in a press conference Wednesday that it was suspicious that the officer turned the camera on after the shooting. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. And the fact that he turned it on after the shooting tells me this was a planned hit. What's disturbing is that once the body camera went on, that the false narrative came out. Romanucci said the officer had his old crap moment after the shooting and pushed a button. You tried to run me over. Those were his first words. Yeah. So he was setting it up to get out of the whole thing. That's what he was doing. That's why those were his um, first words. He was setting everything up to get out of everything. Oh, well, you know, they were rolling the car back on him. Oh, he shot. He was, he feared for his life. You know, that garbage. The Waukegan Police Department and Williams, who spoke publicly for the first time Tuesday via Zoom at a press conference from her hospital bed, have offered two different pictures of what happened that night. Last week, Navarro said the incident happened just before midnight when the officer approached a suspicious vehicle, you know, suspicious is black, as the officer was conducting his investigation, the vehicle fled and was spotted moments later by a second officer who got out of his car to approach the vehicle, Navarro said. The officer exited his vehicle and the vehicle that he was investigating began to reverse towards the officer. The officer then pulled out his duty weapon and fired onto the vehicle, Navarro said. Well, that's not what Tafara Williams said, 
Her story is very different from the police department. No shock, right? The initial police report said the second officer was in fear for his safety. He was scared, y'all. He was scared. He struck Stinnett and Williams. They were taken to the hospital where Stinnett died. No firearms were found in the vehicle, Navarro said. Navarro did not elaborate on why the first officer stopped the vehicle in the first place because he had no business bothering those two who were just sitting in a car and talking. That's not illegal. It's not illegal. You can go to your car in your driveway or parked in front of your house and have another person and sit and talk. I've done that. I've done that with family members. I've done that with friends. And as long as we are not doing nothing illegal, nobody should be bothering us, especially a cop. I've done that before. I've sat in my car and sat in my friends and relatives' cars, and we had conversations. Do it all the time. Okay. The officer appears to know Stanette and Williams by name, tells Stanette he was under arrest. For what? You still didn't. The police report is very inadequate. It still does not say the initial reason on why you approached these two in the first place. And I'm just taking it. He saw two black people in a car and he just wanted to go and F with them. I mean, what other observation would you have at this point? I mean, even the police chief is saying he don't even know what prompted him to go over and bother these two that were just sitting in a car and talking. When Williams, um, okay, so she said, why the officer says, because I said so. So she was asking, why was the officer um, even there? You know, because I said so and I got a warrant. The car then appears to speed away. He didn't have a warrant, y'all. He told them he had a warrant, but technically he had no warrant. And again, go back to what the police chief said. The police chief said he didn't even understand why these two were even being bothered. Waukegan police did not immediately say if there had been a warrant for Stinnett's arrest. There wasn't. Because trust me, if there was a warrant for Marcellus um, Stinnett's arrest during the press conference, that police chief would have said that. He didn't say it during the press conference at all. The Lake County Sheriff's Office lists an active warrant for someone with the same last name. So it was somebody with the last name Stanette, but it was not Marcellus. It was a whole different person. Same last name, different first name. And that was the only warrant the Sheriff's Office had. Williams, the mother of two, said it all started after she had put her children in bed and went outside the house to sit in the driver's seat of her car to smoke with Stanette in the passenger seat. That's when the officer approached the car, called the two by name, and harassed Stanette and Williams. This is what she said. Williams, uh, she drove away slowly and the officer did not follow, she said. When she turned the corner, Williams said she saw another officer. There was a crash. I lost control. The officer was shooting at us. The car ended up slamming into a building. I kept screaming. I don't have a gun, but he kept shooting, Williams said. He told me to get out of the car. I had my hands up and I couldn't move because I had been shot. Marcellus had his hands up. I kept asking him why he was shooting. William said her blood was gushing out her body. 
but the officer wouldn't give them an ambulance until they got out of the car. I could hear uh, Marcella still breathing. I told them, please don't shoot. I have a baby. We have a baby. We don't want to die. So, you know, and <sighs> this is just unbelievable. This is unbelievable. They bothered these two for nothing. They bothered them for nothing. You know, if you are black, you are suspicious by default in America. And they think they don't need no other reason except for suspicious. That's good enough. It's not. It's a BS reason to be bothering people but they've gotten away with saying that for so long when it comes down to black people, it has become the norm to them to do that. Boy, I hope the family gets one hell of a settlement and these cops, every single one that participated in this whole thing, they all need to be jailed. They don't need to be policing anybody. And this goes back to what I said before. White, anybody that's non-black have no business policing black people because they have proven they are never going to do the right thing when they're dealing with us. It's already proven. But y'all, please tell me what you think. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.